If that music isn't a great way to start the day, I don't know what is. That was phenomenal. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace Congregational United Church of Christ. My name is Mark Schmidt, um, and I'm just so glad you're here. Whether you're a, a veteran member or a new member or somebody that's becoming a member today or a visitor, we're just glad you're here and we welcome you to this place. If you look through the bulletin, you'll notice there's lots of things coming up and lots of things going on. Um, next week, September 3rd, uh, Pastor Coley and I uh, will be having a kind of an open sermon, which is a chance for you to ask questions uh, about uh, our, her role primarily, mainly questions for Pastor Coley, hint, hint, um, and, um, and to get to know us better and get to know what's happening in our church. Uh, the weekend after that is Rally Day. We'll have worship here at 9, and then we'll be down at, at the park at 1030. The week after that is, what am I forgetting? Uh, the week after that is Sunday School Breakfast. I think we're on the 17th already. And the week after that, Sunday School actually starts. Plus, we have Moon Beach coming up, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But as I was reminded this morning, tomorrow, what happens tomorrow? Oh, the answer I got was the JV football game. That's right. <laughs> Uh, but it's also the first day of school in Two Rivers. Hey, I'm Kim Bramer. I'm kind of newish, and I became aware that Grace has like this little miracle that happens every year where the people of God go down to the lake shore and turn pies mm. into scholarships. Uh, um, and it's an important thing. So Rally Day, we have the pie auction, and the reason it's important is because Keeping camps like Moon River is getting more and more expensive. There are special places, they take upkeep, there's taxes, there's staff, and so camperships go up. And as, as a people of God here, we want to offer and make Moon Beach Retreat available to everyone. And pie auction at Rally Day is how we do it. So I'm a little kid out there for loaves and fishes saying, you guys, we need pies, we need salsa, we need whatever amazing cinnamon rolls and um, whatever you can bring to make that auction. It is the only fundraiser that we have for Moon Beach and it goes a long way to make God experiences at camp available to all. Pretty simple, you just come on Rally Day and you bring your stuff down to Horseshoe Pavilion, and then we auction it off. If your recipe has a story, why not bring it? If it's uh, a recipe that's important to you, we have a request from Renee Anderson, who has selflessly said that she would be happy to test any recipe. <laughs> so um, for that, we look forward to seeing you and your pies and your bidding on Rally Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kim. One of the things we'll be talking about today, kind of a theme for the day, is how our roots in faith, our roots in community, our roots in family, um, <clears throat> as they go deeper and deeper, help us get through times of transition or times of, of challenge. Um, so I looked for a song that fit that. Um, and I looked and I looked and I found one. However, it's a new song, um, but it's an easy one to sing. So um, uh, Bev is going to play a little bit of it for us, and then I'm, I'm going to try to sing along, and you're invited to join in whenever you'd like to. Um, it's on the opening page of your bulletin, and it is called Right by the Water.
Mr. Fran, you can do the solo part on it for us later. Is that how this is going to work, you think, David? Okay, good. He said yes. All right. We're all set. Um, at this time, I'd encourage us to pre prepare our hearts and our minds in this place today for the worship of God. wonderful thing when members of the family live together in love and peace. May the church be one, just as Christ and God are one, that Christ may be glorified in us. The grace, mercy, and peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. I invite you to stand for our opening song, Right by the River, verses 1 and 2.
like about that song is the words, especially in the verses. Come one and all, lost, lonely, poor, blessed are you, God's realm is yours. And even though God welcomes us and invites us and walks with us, sometimes we forget. And we need to acknowledge that. So we're going to do that this morning in our prayer of brokenness. And I invite you to join with me in that prayer. Happy are those who turn away from the counsel of the wicked. But all oh, that counsel can be so seductive. It draws us in, holds us fast, distracts our priorities, obstructs our capacity to love. But we seek no obstructions. We reject wicked counsel. We embrace God's embrace. For whatever ways we don't, we confess. In whichever ways we sin, we repent. Hear our prayers, O oh God, as before you we seek wholeness. God of mercy, grace, reconciliation, and goodness, we are sorry for so much. For words we cannot bear to say, for memories we cannot bear to relive, for thoughts we cannot bear to admit. But you know our hearts, relieve us of our burdens, find our hearts not to be bearable, but rather to you, so that in all ways we may live in the joy of your salvation and the delight of your loving embrace. The delight of your loving embrace. Happy are we, holy people, when we walk in the ways of our God, Happy are we, beloved ones, as we receive God's forgiveness. Happy are we, God's own, because we are made whole through Jesus Christ. Amen. happy person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. And they recite God's instructions day and night. Which bears fruit at just the right time and whose leaves don't fade. Thank you, Weston. I know Kayla's here. I know Felix is here. I know B is here. I know Bryn is here. I knew Grayson is here. Are there other children here? Come on down. Come on down. Now, I got something that's a little kind of weird here, but I'm going to put this on. 
What, what is that brand? A lay. She, Lynn said it's a lay. Is she right? Yes. Why would I be putting a lay on? Good morning, B. Why would I put it, be putting a lay on, do you think? Any ideas? A lay is mostly in Hawaii. And what's going on? What just happened in Hawaii? There was a fire in Hawaii. In fact, we're going to look at a picture. If you want to turn and look at the screen, there is a picture of a tree in the city where the fire was. Now, this fire, this tree rather, happened, that's the picture before the fire. It's a banyan tree. It's 150 years old. It's an old tree. It's been there a long time, but it looks pretty good, doesn't it? A lot of green, right? Do you see anything else about the tree that we should know? What do you think about that tree? Should we look at the next picture? We're going to look at the next picture. I want you to, oh, what happened there? It what? What, Kayla? It broke down. Kayla said it broke down, yeah. Yes, at the storm. At the storm, at the storm of the fire, the tree broke down, right? Anything else about that tree you notice? Good job, Kayla. Anything else you notice? There are some vines hanging down, yeah. What about the building behind the tree? Grayson, what do you see in the building behind the tree? It almost, exactly, it almost burnt down. Felix, do you see anything else in that picture we should notice? Nothing else right now? Um, has the tree been through a tough time? Yeah. Has the tree been challenged? Yeah. But some people say, some scientists say, that tree is still alive. Even though it's been beaten up and burned and scarred, it's still alive. How could the tree be still alive? Look at that picture. How can that be a live tree? It's still standing. What's helping it stand? The roof. The roof? That's, an, that's a thought. Gracie said the building. What about what's underneath the tree? The roots. The, look at Felix going to town here. The roots. <laughs> the roots. The roots are keeping that tree alive because the roots go deep. The tree, they think, might live because those roots go so deep, just like us, just like us. If our roots go deep in our faith, if our roots go deep in this community, in our families, um, in our church, we are still alive, even though sometimes we may not feel like it or look like it, just like that tree. So today, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pray for the people in Hawaii that their roots are deep and that they can still, do, can still thrive and recover from this. So to do that, it only makes sense to me that we put one of these on. Would you like to come and get one? And then we're going to say a little prayer. You, Kayla likes pink. Uh, is that pink enough? Not pink enough. <laughs> yeah, they, they're saying it's better. That's better. Kayla, that's yours. Okay, <gasps> you want one too? There you go, buddy. Uh, what color do you want, Brent? Multicolored ones. Uh, sort of like that. Will that work? That, we could trade later if you don't like it. Brent, what do you think? Uh, Grayson, what do you think? You're the other one. And B, what about you? Orange, orange. And Felix has got a yellow one. We're good. You guys, can we come up here? And, and say a prayer for the people in Hawaii, okay? We're gonna stay right here, yeah. Um, so let's, let's, let's fold our hands and bow our heads. God, we come to you in this place thankful for this beautiful day, for this lovely weather, for a chance to celebrate and be with you as you touch our lives. Uh, we know we will go through tough times just like the people in Hawaii are doing that today. Be with them, God. Love them. Uh, let them feel the love of, your, of, of, of you in, in their walk with you today. Help them recover from this uh, in a way that uh, supports their faith and their growth. Thank you for the deep roots that you give us to walk each day with you. We pray in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Good job.
Notice nobody goes and sits down right away. You're welcome. mean this very sincerely. I cannot think of a better example of roots going deep than acacia. In fact, I was talking to somebody before worship this morning, and, and the response, we, we, we had a conversation that was, Acacia's a member, uh, and it sure seems like she is because she's such a part of this place. Uh, and so today we celebrate her, her deep roots in her faith, um, and Taylor's going introduce to introduce us to, to Acacia and remind us of those roots that she has. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mark, for stealing half my speech there. I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but you, you did have some very good points. Acacia yeah. does have very deep roots here. So today I have the honor and pleasure of introducing Acacia St. Pierre as an official member of Grace Congregation. Acacia was baptized into Grace when she was a baby. Um, her family ended up moving away for a little bit, but in 2009, or 2019, excuse me, Acacia moved back to the area with her dad and began to attend church more regularly. She began involvement with Genji, ASP, Vacation Bible School, Christmas Cantata, anything else? Lots more probably that I can't think of. Um, in a few days, Acacia will be moving from her hometown here up to Stevens Point where she plans to pursue an education in special education. Um, Acacia's got a huge heart that shines against the world. Um, and although she will not continue to be here with us all the time, she will continue to have her roots here at Grace, and she will continue to be a wonderful member here. So well, let's give a warm welcome to Acacia. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. Acacia has found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ, and through prayer and study, she has been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm her bapt baptism and to claim in the presence of this place her covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of Grace Congregational Church. She is here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Acacia, you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ. If so, please say, I do. You renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ. If so, please say, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? So please say, I do. And do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. And Acacia, do you promise according to the grace within you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. Again, if so, please say, I promise with the help of God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the Church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and this place. Occasionally, we give thanks for this community of faith and for you, that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. One more question. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the, the world? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. And let us, 
the members of Grace Congregational United Church of Christ express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. Kindred in Christ, we welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Amen. Acacia, it's just an honor for me to welcome you to this church as a full-fledged member. You're the first time I've done this as to welcome a member. I can't think of a better person to do it with. And your roots go deep. Congratulations. Good morning. Last I'm, going to, I'm going to briefly introduce this scripture. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, if, you, if you've been here for the last couple of weeks, you know that Pastor Coley um, has been talking about transition and talked a lot about um, the Israelites wandering in the desert over and over again because they were afraid to cross over into the Promised Land. They didn't want to cross the River Jordan. She's been sharing us with that story um, and, they, uh, and, and the fact that they could have gotten into the Promised Land a lot sooner if they hadn't chosen to wander for 40 years. But they wandered because they were afraid. They didn't want to take the risk. And some of them even talked about maybe if we went back to Egypt as slaves, maybe that's a better place for us to be. So today's reading, which Alan is going to share with us in a minute, is one, and I know this, we read this last week too, um, it's, but that's okay. Because this story, which sort of ends today, and it ends the series of, of, of us talking about that transition, um, it's the beginning of their journey into the Promised Land. So there's lots more to come. Moses never got to the Promised Land. Um, and almost the whole generation, except for two, that escaped from Egypt, uh, they were gone, they had passed, they had died before crossing the River Jordan. So it's a whole new generation coming in. I think this story bears repeating. I'd like you to hear it again today, and I'd like you to listen for a couple of words that are said more than once. So as Ellen reads, please listen for a word from God. From the Old Testament, book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall lead this people to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, Ellen. Did you hear those words? What are they? Strong and courageous. I think it said at least three times um, in that reading. Um, 
those are the attributes or characteristics that God is calling those Israelites to as they prepare to cross. Um, I heard those words at least, like I said, three times, but I couldn't also help notice the connection to Psalm 1 this morning. I think there's a direct connection between Psalm 1 and the roots of the tree and crossing over the Jordan into a new river, or a new land, rather. Um, I think that connection is if you're going to cross over into the new land, you have to be strong and courageous, but what gives you the strength and the courage are the deep roots. Without the deep roots, um, you're going to wither, you're going to die on the vine like the psalm says. The Israelites have been wandering, we've talked about that already, and sometimes, just like in our lives, we get stuck in wandering, in doing the things that are familiar things that feel safe. They've been done before. We don't have to change anything. We know it works. We do that sometimes, not because it's the best thing to do, but because we're afraid, or we're unsure, or we lack the strength and courage that we need to make the crossing, to make the change, to make the transition. But with little risks, if you don't take a risk, there's not a lot of growth. So, how does this story apply to us? We're going to watch a couple excerpts this morning from a movie. And in that movie, um, you're going to see a teacher struggling. The movie is called Mona Lisa Smile. And it's about an art teacher that takes a job in 1953. And the job she takes is at a very fancy schmancy, wealthy, private women's college you may have heard of Wellesley. The students come from a very privileged background, and the students have learned how to play school very well. They know the school game, they got it down. This is the first day of class. The teacher is brand new, she's nervous, and the students know it. Exactly. Um, she starts teaching, she starts teaching, what the prior professor taught. She stayed in a safe place. It was the same syllabus, the same teaching stuff that he had used for years and years. She wanted to be safe. And so let's see how that first day goes in Mona Lisa Smiles. They can smell fear. This is History of Art 100. We'll be following Dr. Staunton's syllabus. Any questions so far? Your name. Why don't you go first? Connie Baker. Catherine Watson, nice to meet you. Dr. Watson, I presume. <laughs> Not yet. And you are? Giselle Levy. Giselle. If someone could get the... Susan Delacourt. Thank you, Susan Delacourt. From the beginning, man has always had the impulse to create art. Can anyone tell me what this is? Wounded bison, Altamira, Spain, about 15,000 BC. Joan Brandwin. Very good, Joan. Despite the age of these paintings, they are technically very sophisticated. Because, because of the shading and the thickness of the lines as it moves over the hump of the bison. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly right. Next slide. This one you are probably less familiar with. It was discovered by archaeologists in 1879, Lascaux, France, dates back to 10,000 BC, singled out because of the flowing lines depicting the movement of the animal. <laughs> Impressive name. Herd of horses. I meant yours. We call her Flicka. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. They call me Betty. Very good. Betty is also correct. Just because something is ancient doesn't mean that it is primitive. For example, next slide, please. Mm. 
My Serena is his queen, 2470 BC. It's a funerary. ...of the lions as it moves over the hump of the... That's good. Thank you. Bison. They can smell. Shortly, shortly after this discussion, we're not going to watch the whole thing. Shortly after this discussion, they're looking at the pieces of art. She's, uh, she's seeing what's going on in the class, and she says to them, how many of you have read this book before class? Every single hand goes up. They all read the book. Now, I don't know about you, but I went to UW-Whitewater, and nobody read the entire book on the first day of class. <laughs> um, so this teacher is intimidated, she's scared, and she knows that she's got to change what she's doing. She's got to approach this group differently. So the next excerpt we're going to see opens with her thinking about, what am I going to do? I can't keep doing the same thing. It's safe, it's his syllabus, but I've got to go into new territory. She knows that for things to improve, she's going to have to change. So she has to make the change. We could say, to beat a dead horse here, that she wandered in the desert for a while, but she knew that she couldn't keep teaching from the same syllabus. Or she could change it up and cross the Jordan and see what happens. The question for us is, and I want you to figure this out, does she cross or is she afraid and stays in the same place? Did she stick with what she knew or did she go to a different place? Part two. There she is thinking. What is that? You tell me. Carcass by Soutine, 1925. It's not on the syllabus. No, it's not. Is it any good? Hmm? Come on, ladies. There's no wrong answer. There's also no textbook telling you what to think. It's not that easy, is it? All right, no. It's not good. In fact, I wouldn't even call it art. It's grotesque. Is there a rule against art being grotesque? I think there's something ag aggressive about it. And erotic. To you, everything is erotic. Yeah, everything is erotic. Girls. <laughs> Aren't there standards? Of course there are. Otherwise, a tacky velvet painting could be equated to a Rembrandt. Hey, my Uncle Freddy has two tacky velvet paintings. He loves those clowns. <laughs> there are standards, technique, composition, color, even subject. So if you're suggesting that rotted side of meat is art, much less good art, then what are we going to learn? Just that. You have outlined our new syllabus, Betty. Thank you. What is art? What makes it good or bad, and who decides? Next slide, please. 25 years ago, someone thought this was brilliant. I can see that. Who? <laughs> My mother. I painted it for her birthday. <laughs> Next slide. This is my mom. Is it art? That's good. Snapshot. If I told you Ansel, you can tell what she did. She crossed the river, but I had to leave that clip in there about the art and the cow. I just thought it was too good. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about our first reading today, um, about the importance of deep roots and the banyan tree that we looked at with with the children this morning. For us, for this place. And it says it in our, in our tagline, in our mission statement, deep roots is about learning and growth. That's one of the ways we do that. We do it through love. We do it through the incredible service you provide. But we also do it through growth. What gets us through the tough times and the transition times are the deep roots that we have in our faith. So let's bring this home a little closer. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be starting Sunday School and Confirmation and Gen G. We offer these things because we believe 
that they help the roots to go deeper. Acacia, acacia is a model of that. That these deep roots bear fruit, the leaves don't fade, and even when things get tough, we're able to keep going. We invest energy and resources into VBS and field trips and learning materials because we believe that Christian education is, a, is important. We believe it's essential. And I do too. So we're looking at a bit of a new syllabus for the fall. When that, when that student said, they're all going through their books, it's not in the syllabus. I love that line. So we have a new syllabus coming out this fall. I want to tell you about it. There'll be a class for three and four-year-olds called We Wonder, W-E-E, -E, We Wonder. It'll be offered after worship from 1015 to 11, and the, chance, the class is a chance to explore God's world and nurture the children's relationship with a loving creator. They will experience the love of this community in a safe and caring environment, and above all, know that they're loved by God. A second class, and you, you've heard these words before maybe, will be called Godly Play. It's offered for students in kindergarten through sixth grade. The class reflects on key Bible stories and provides, ability, and provides the students, and this is the part that I think is important, it provides the students with the ability to talk about their faith and to tell the stories from Scripture. It also meets after worship from 1015 to 11, and we have some volunteers that are being trained in godly play. And gracious, thank you so much to Doug Charles and Don Llewellyn. We have a godly play classroom that includes new shelving and godly play Bible characters and a replica of Noah's Ark, handmade by Don Llewellyn. Stop in and check it out if you want to learn more about godly play or you'd like to be trained as a teacher, as a faith guide, the students in those classes, there's a training coming up. It doesn't mean you have to be there every week. Maybe once a month, maybe once every six weeks. We'd love to have you join us. The next class is, so we've got We Wonder, we've got Godly Play. This next one is really crossing the Jordan. Uh, if there's any class that's an example of crossing the river and it takes courage and strength, courage for me to even say this to, to you, the class is called Ukulele Sunday School. We, we have been gifted a set of ukuleles and we're going to use them in a new class to teach scripture, to teach Bible stories, and for the students that learn the instrument to come and share with us um, their music uh, and what they've learned in worship occasionally. A little bit like um, the junior version of, of Copper Coins, their faith song, sort of. Um, they, um, it's for students in fourth grade and up. Originally, we said fourth through sixth grade, and some high school st students said, I want to be in that class. So now we're just saying fourth grade and up. Um, and uh, it'll also be offered uh, after worship, 10, 15 to 11. And um, there's one more thing I want to say about that. Um, uh, God, so there'll be a choice here because godly play class is kindergarten through sixth grade. Ukulele um, is fourth grade and up. So if you're in fourth grade and you want to do ukulele, it's all yours. If you want to stay in godly play, you're more than welcome to do that. Confirmation for students in grades 7 and 8 starts on September 20th. We've got a field trip that night. We're going to Lakeland University. There'll be a special confirmation presentation that night with music by uh, Reverend um, Jacob Nult. I think some of you know Jacob. Um, classes start, regular classes start for a confirmation on the 27th of the month. Um, they meet from 6 to 7 on Wednesday nights. And finally, Gen G is a casual grouping for high school students to share their experiences as young Christians, and what does that mean as they go into adulthood? They meet on Wednesday evenings from seven to eight. So we're talking. We got your We Wonder. We got your Godly Play. We got your Ukulele Sunday School. We got Confirmation, and we got Gen G. We're crossing the river, okay? But we're crossing that river so that the roots 
the roots go deeper. And we've got, we've got people like Acacia living her faith out as she goes uh, and moves on to adulthood and goes on to school. To kick off Sunday school and ukuleles and godly play and confirmation, we're having two special events. For Sunday school on September 17th, su Sunday, September 17th, that day, all families that have Sunday school aged children, the entire family, um, we're having breakfast for you in the fellowship hall and we'll explain more about, about Sunday school. Uh, for confirmation folks and Gen G folks, we're having a dinner on the February 13th for you and your families to learn more about that. There's more information about that in the bulletin. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up these next couple of weeks. Now, you're gonna answer the next question. Here's the question. Think about the Israelites. Will all of this go perfectly? No, it's not supposed to go perfectly because those challenges and the scars help us go deeper in our faith. If you listen to the story of the Israelites and their adventures in the promised land, we know, it's, we know there's gonna be some challenges, but we will do our best to get those roots deep. Um, and we're doing that with two things here. We're crossing over into new territory. And some of you might say, it's not in the syllabus. And you're right. You have an invitation this morning to help pull this off. Um, there are out on the um, a welcome table, there are sign up sheets for faith guides or Sunday school folks if you want to help with We Wonder, Godly Play, Ukulele Sunday School, Confirmation, or Gen G. You are not committing yourself for your life here. You're committing yourself to occasionally coming in and working with young folks to get the roots to go deeper for them and maybe for you too. Will you please join me in a spirit of prayer? God, you call us to new adventures. Creator, you challenge us to learn and grow and you promise that you'll be present with us in these risky times. We pray today for strength and courage to be the people you call us to be, to give life to others, to encourage, to teach, to learn, to grow, to care for all in this community and beyond. We are so thankful and grateful for your continual presence in our lives. As you promised Israelites and you promised us you walk with us, you are here with us. And we ask for courage to be the people that cross challenging times and thorny issues. We pray today for those from this community that need your loving touch, for those that are hospitalized or depressed or alone or frightened and struggling. Give us the courage this day to reach out and be your voice, God, and be a comforting presence to others. We pray for our Christian education program and the opportunities and challenges it presents. We pray for Pastor Coley as she wraps up her time of vacation and rest and as she returns to us tomorrow. And God, we are so grateful for Acacia and the roots that you have established in her. As school starts for many of us in these next days, give us the joy of learning, the willingness to take on new ideas and, and subjects, a spirit of discovery and creativity. We thank you, God, that you love us, each and every one of us, and you even took the time to teach us how to pray. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God has given us. God has given us many blessings in this place our talents, abilities, gifts this day. We are thankful for so many in this place who give time, treasure, and talents to support the faith life of others in this community and beyond. Just a walk through the new godly playroom, classroom reveals the talents and generosity of our fellow members and their willingness to invest in the growth in the roots of others. Remembering that, will you join with me in the offertory prayer? God of joyful abundance, Thank you for the blessings you have poured on our lives. Receive our gifts and bless their use to continue your work of love and service here in the world. May your legacy of love and justice be experienced in the ways that we share now and always. Amen. Again, sometimes those words to songs just hit you in the right place. Um, this morning was that for me. Um, I, I cannot wrap up the service until we thank our musicians for incredible music this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Bill looks so bashful when I say that. Like, <laughs> I invite you to extend your hands for God's blessing. Take these words with you as you go today. Go forth into this world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit 
And now may the blessing of God Almighty, who is creator and redeemer and sustainer of us all, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.